Hello, everyone, and welcome to Edge Talk Radio. I am here with Angela Zabel, that's me, and we are here with Alejandra G. Brady, and this is going to be an amazing show. So she is an intuitive, she is an author, she does feng shui, she does so many things, but we are here also going to be talking about unveiling the spiritual gifts and her book that she has coming out. So you definitely don't want to make miss that because it's called, I Just Can't Make This Shit Up. <laughs> So it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> so I'm here today. My name is Angela Zabel. And who am I? I am a teacher, coach, and medium. I have connected with spirit my entire life. And I work with the team in the non-physical. And because of that, I share a multitude of messages from a multitude of realms that are out there. So there's not just one realm when you start working with the non-physical. And because of that, Again, I am a teacher, coach, medium. I'm a radio show host, a writer, a retreat host, a gallery reader, and a speaker. And I also speak, I do speaking engagements and work with people around the world, online and in person. And because of that, I also offer classes and the Amplified Universe monthly membership. And this is all about growing who we are, understanding who we are with ourselves, our world, all that is around us and all that all that is beyond and our role in it. Sharing knowledge and working with others around the world. You can find out more about me and all the social media aspects. And the biggest thing, go to my website, AngelaZabel.com. And today we are here with Edge Magazine. So Edge Magazine is the leading events and media resource dedicated to all aspects of holistic living, health, wellness, and the mysteries beyond sharing information, wisdom, and resources. We are, they are committed to promoting businesses and organizations and individuals who support our collective journey to wholeness and balance. And they're currently distributed in 30 states plus Canada with over 17,000 uh, magazines print per printing. But they also have a vibrant online magazine, and that has over 42,000 people reached per month. So you can have a magazine shipped directly to your door. You can stay up to date with their newsletter, or you can become a drop spot. And check out more about them at edgemagazine.net. And today we are here with Alejandra G. Brady. She has an award-winning book that bears the title that prepares you for what is to come. And that is, I just can't make this shit up. <laughs> At 50, this was this very successful interior designer was suffering from cervical compression and feeling something was missing from her life. So she took a pause and launched into a spiritual journey. And as she did that, she started journaling a book. And as she did that, her transformation began. And then she hired a feng shui master to do a consultation on her home as she prepared for the cervical fusion. It was during this consultation that the woman told her instantly that Alejandra would soon follow in her footsteps, even though Alejandra was in disbelief, which I can imagine that. <laughs> But when Alejandra began applying the feng shui principles to her home, massive transformation occurred for her health, her relationship with her husband, and her financial outcome. But much more was to come, allowing her to accept the spiritual gifts that began when she first saw someone at her bedside who had just passed over. As she opened to her spiritual exploration, amazing synchronicities, astonishing experiences, and spiritual ahas just kept showing up. Hence the, the book, I Just Can't Make This Shit Up. <laughs> Overcoming fear and accepting her spiritual gifts, Alejandra is globally sought after a feng shui consultant, combining the Eastern art of home energy enhancements and her design skills with her intuitive knowing about the clients and what she felt energetically about the homes. She is here to offer more of her amazing story and some thoughts on how you might open up to your own spiritual gifts and the abundant life that awaits you. And make sure to check out more about her. Again, go on Amazon and many multiple other places to find her book. I just can't make this shit up. And also check out her website, Alejandra Brady. Dot com And also she is on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and all those links will be down below. So don't worry about if you missed them because I do talk fast sometimes. I am <laughs> from the Midwest. <laughs> but Alejandra, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it greatly. And I'm just curious, 
when this whole journey started for you, how did you go from where you were, the normal person per se, to stepping into this spiritual world? Well, first of all, Angela, thank you for having me. And I'm going to get myself comfortable here. Um, yes, that is a great question. Um, you know, I dated my husband. I met him when we were in college. So I was 18 when we started dating. So from 18 to 50, I'm this one person. And then at 50, I'm like, whoa, totally different human being. And he's just like, what's going on? I felt like what's going on. Um, I blame it all on feng shui because once I feng shui my house and my house was energetically aligned, it started me down this rabbit hole of wanting to learn more about different spiritual modalities. And, and then as I did that, that's how the spiritual journey really began. You know, as, as the first thing I wanted to dive into was like meditation. Well, mm -hmm. one of the first meditations I ever did, you know, by myself that I consider like a real meditation, I got told I'm very clear audience, you know, in my right ear, by Archangel Michael, because I said, who is this? Uh, <laughs> he goes, you're going to be writing a book. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, thank you. I have no interest in doing this. You know, what else you got for me? What else can I do? Um, because I had asked, I had actually very intently asked what my purpose was at this time on this planet. Our son had graduated from college and moved to Chicago. Actually, he lived in oh. Chicago for the first few years after graduation. Um, and was, you know, living his best life. I was recovering from cervical fusion. Um, and I was studying feng shui at the time. So I really was really, really intentional in what I was asking. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm kind of at a pivot point here, right? And I got told it was to write the book. And I just said, yeah, no, that's not <laughs> what I want to do. I have no interest in being, you know, quote unquote, an author or famous or talking to people. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm very good where I'm at. However every day for the next five days, that conversation continued. Anytime I asked, I got told the same thing. So as you know, you finally go, okay, fine guys, but help me. What am I supposed to write about? And at that point, they, I call them they, cause it's like a whole team, right? Like we don't just have one person around us. I mean, Archangel Michael is who spearheaded this whole little campaign, <laughs> But there's a whole team around me that I feel all the time, which I love. That's why I'm like, hey, if they want to come in and chat while we're talking, <laughs> sure. Uh, the, they said, just start writing what happens to you. And I'm like, yes. okay. And, you know, I did. And some days it was like, nothing happened today. And that's what they said. You have to write something every single day. And literally, I was just like, nothing happened today. You know, other days it was pages. Other days it's like, I hate this. You know, it was different every day. But eventually, as I really started tuning in and getting the opportunity to work with different healers, because suddenly I wanted to. I also had never really wanted to. I wanted to. And I had the opportunity to work with them. Then, like, some crazy stuff started happening. And then, all of a sudden, it started connecting dots from things that had happened to me since childhood that I never thought about like I didn't know I, that I wasn't you know or I was in the minority of people who could see dead people like I just assumed everybody could so I never talked about it to anybody because I just thought well can't everyone talk to people who've died like it just never occurred to me that maybe not so much so as I started to connect those dots and put the puzzle pieces together and talk to healers and share this information with them they helped me understand what I was Right. And they helped me with the terminology because I didn't have the terminology to describe a what I was or what I was feeling or what was going on. And, you know, so they're the ones that taught me words like you are clairvoyant, you are clairaudient. I'm like, I just hear things. So they explained those things and taught them to me and explained what they were and how to use them, how to protect myself, you know, because that's very important when you're just starting this process. You know, everything comes in because everybody gets excited that somebody new can you know, and then you've got lots of noise. So like, I'm tired. I'm not sleeping because all night long, it's just chatter. So they taught me how to protect myself. And, and that's how it started unfolding. You know, that's, that's how everything started, but it all started because I applied feng shui principles to my house and I energetically aligned the space, which then kind of opened those opportunities for me to really see what was meant for me. You know, that's something I, I, yeah, there's a couple of really true. key talk, talking points in there yeah. is for one thing, the they, I always call them they too, because they're always switching and always changing. And I just right. got tired of their, I'm like, 
do you guys even care if I call you by a name? Do you really care? And they're like, no, we really don't care. I'm like, right. oh, good, because I don't got time for that. Yeah. We work as a team. You know, they'll just say we work as a team. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm like Council of Light, my parents, you know, archangels, masters. I'm like, okay, forget it. It's to source, God universe you know I'm like it's too many to name all everybody individually <laughs> yeah. it'd take you all day and all night you'd it still would be it there <laughs> yeah and spirit guides you know I'm like oh my gosh but I don't you love that I love that I always have just my back someone's always yes. got my back I feel it all the time and that's the nice thing is once you open up and I like the fact that you really the fear factor of it wasn't as much there I don't feel with you there's some people where it's it's very fearful and you know when you talked about seeing people in the physical seeing people out there a lot of people think oh that'd be really fun to do but when it actually happens it's a little freaky I've got it is it is yes it is my and, my first experience was my boyfriend. He died in a in a car accident overnight. So like I knew who the person was. It wasn't that I can remember. Let me just say the first experience I can remember, which was when I was 16. So I knew him. You know what I mean? So it didn't really scare me because I knew the person. Right. Um, but yes, I can see that. And no, I I just I was scared at the beginning. I was definitely a little bit more on the fearful side because when I first said yes, you know, you get asked if you want to accept your gifts and then you can say yes or no, free will. Mm -hmm. I said yes, only of the light, you know, and only in everyone's highest and greatest good who's involved. Yes. And, but then it was a party and then it got to be <laughs> too much. Yes. So there was a point where I'm like, okay, how do I stop this? Because I can't, I can't control them, right? Like right. they're all excited that I'm here and that I finally, after 50 years, can see them or hear them or listen to them or pay attention to what they're trying to tell me. But it was it was too much. So yeah. then I worked with the healers to show me not so much out of fear, but just out of like, I, I need to rest, you yeah. know, and to show me how to create boundaries, how to create office hours, how to create, you know, the, that division from, Yes, I'm very willing to hear you and follow what you're guiding me to do. But, you know, they have no concept of time and space, yeah. but it's 3 a.m. <laughs> and I do. And I have to get up tomorrow morning and I'm super tired and I can't have all of you in my room right now. So, and that's good for people to know too, because I do truly feel so many people are waking up right now. And <laughs> if it feels too overwhelming, you know, there, there's certainly that like, oh, forget this. I don't want any of this. I'm out. You yeah. know, I think that there's a very real chance that a lot of people might want to do that. So part of the book was to tell people like, stick with it. You know, it will get better. You have the ability to set those boundaries that work for you and how you can help others. Cause that's the whole point of all this, right? They're not talking to us just for our benefit. It's for us to help others. Absolutely. And the idea, you know, a lot of people get woken up in the night and it I I was there too. It's like, oh my God, I need some sleep at some point. You guys need to like go to bed. <laughs> yes. Or the hugs. Like, have you ever been hugged at night? Oh, yeah. I've gotten hugged and my hand held and I'm like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> dude, you know, and I woke, I remember getting a really big one and I heard two men laughing. And I woke up that morning and I told my husband, I said, I don't know what's going to happen today, but something's going to happen today because here's what happened to me. And one of my favorite uncles passed away. So it was my dad and my uncle that came. And my oh, cousin yeah. called me like by 10 a.m. I got the phone call. My dad passed away. I'm like, oh, of course, that's what happened. You know, but, you know, I'm glad you guys are laughing and having fun that you've been reunited. But it is about 430 in the morning here in Tampa. And I just need some rest. And I mean, it's a little freaky to get woken up with somebody like, rubbing you or hugging you or touching you like you're just like you know? feeling their presence in the yes, room feeling their presence minute. it's it like takes... oh because I know a lot of people like oh I wish I could do that and it's like you have to realize it's not the oh this is really cool and just fun and <laughs> there is some you know a little bit of hesitation mm -hmm. on as a human because as yeah. a human we have this this innate ability in us where when things are off it's our fight or flight our fight or flight right. mechanism kicks in so you have to realize that's there first but to be able to know that you have control to tell them hey okay that was fun but maybe next time mm -hmm. let's wait till 7 a.m yeah. <laughs> 
Well, and you know, it's so funny because feng shui is all about creating safety and security and balance and harmony in your space and having your bed in command position, which means you can see the door, you know, go back to like caveman times, Hmm. you know, you don't want your back to the entrance of the cave because a saber tooth tiger can come and get you, right? You want to be facing the entrance, but you don't want it directly in front of you either. You want to kind of be off to the side where you can see it. So feng shui is all about creating this safety thing and you've created all this and then there's someone grabbing you in the middle of the night and you're just like, oh, you know, the head's going to explode. (laughs) The feng shui, it worked awesome. It brought them in and and they were there. It was so inviting. (laughs) It was, it was. And so I don't know how you are, but like for me, I can't have mirrors in my bedroom. I don't know if you can or not. For me, mirrors are a portal. And if, if I have a mirror that faces the bed or is anywhere in the bedroom, it just like party time. So I've taken them all out for some people. It doesn't bother them at all for others. Super, super, super sensitive to that energy. Cause it's, you know, very yang energy. So I just was wondering if you had that or not. I don't have any mirrors in our bedroom. Ooh, don't put one in. <laughs> so I'm like, I never thought of that. No, I don't have any. I don't yeah, don't 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 put have. one in. <laughs> I don't think we ever have. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and it's interesting because I also have had a um, an interaction with things that were coming out of a mirror in someone else's bedroom so it's like yeah you might want to you know maybe just keep it in the bathroom or in the yeah. closet but not in your bedroom where you're at all the time if so you're super sensitive to it you know I have had some clients um that had you know this gargantuan mirror that was facing right at their bed and so of course I was like oh you know they're like oh no we love it we love to watch ourselves and I'm like okay I'm like how do you sleep great okay not a problem for you you know, but for those of us that are super sensitive and certainly people come in and chat with us and all that, they could be a little bit disruptive. So that's just a little feng shui tip for the other side. <laughs> that's a good thing for a lot of people to know because a lot of people don't realize. And and that's the other thing is we're, we've been talking about feng shui and maybe you should let people know what feng shui is for some people oh. who don't know what it is. Sure, happy to. So feng shui is an ancient Chinese practice that dates back like between four to 6,000 years, depending on the textbook. It was originated by people that worked for the emperors, uh, like monks and stuff of that nature, like that kind of person that would work for the emperor to try and scout out the most auspicious location to locate their burial sites, then their temples, then their homes. And so it kind of got more and more um, unified, I guess, as to like, you know, more and more things started getting feng shui. And it's just been carried down. And I was taught by somebody who learned from the person who brought it to the Western world. So mm-hmm. I am certified in BTB feng shui, which is a more Western approach. There are multiple schools of feng shui. And I always tell people this too. Like if you start to get interested and you're questioning and you want to start diving, find a couple of people that you like on Instagram, look at their posts. If you resonate with what they're saying, find out what kind of certification they have and then stick to that school of feng shui because a lot of people get very confused when they try and bring in the different schools. The basic principles are the same across the board, but they have different ways of getting there. So you know what I mean? So it just, I find it very helpful. Most of the time when people are confused, it's because they've been taking a little bit from here, a little bit from here, a little bit from here. And then they're like, I don't even know where to start anymore. I'm like, okay, well, which one resonates the most? And let's look at that. And sometimes I'm not the teacher. If somebody resonated with the compass school more, then I'm like, then I'm not the teacher for you. You need to find somebody who teaches or who does compass feng shui. So that's all. But it's a way of bringing your home, your office, your space, whatever it is, your desk into alignment so that opportunities can come to you. So it's not transactional. You know, some people think that like, you know, if this is a plant, if I put a plant right here, then tomorrow I'm going to have money because I put it yeah. like in the wealth corner of my desk. It's not transactional. Sometimes things do manifest very quickly, but what it is, is super intentional. You are placing an item in a certain position for a certain reason, because you are calling in that opportunity or the opposite. You're getting rid of stuff to call in opportunities, right? My teacher used to tell me, You know, if somebody's trying to hand you a million dollars and your hands are full, how are you going to take it? So you have to also make space in your home 
for office or desk, whatever the case may be, for opportunities to find their way to you. So a lot of times it's not about placing items, it's about getting rid of clutter, whether it's mental clutter or physical clutter. You know, if it's clutter in your attic, it could be mental clutter. If it's clutter in your basement, it could be subconscious things that you're not dealing with. If it's clutter at eye level, everyday obstacles in your way. So it's really layered. It's it's a beautiful practice. And I'll, I'll spend my entire life continuing to learn because it's not a, you know, you're not just done, even though I'm fully certified in it. I always will take continuing education programs. And I always want to learn from other practitioners too, you know, because we might have a little bit of different ways to do it. And why not learn from other people as well? But it is, it's a beautiful practice that helps kind of bring your whole space into alignment. And I think that's what you had mentioned too about resonating, what you resonate with. That's mm -hmm. so important for people to realize if something doesn't resonate with you, then you need to go another direction, move that through. And also the learning, the continuing learning, we should all be continually, continually learning because the energy shifts. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure you felt a big shift in the last few years and how has that affected that energy shift? Has it affected how you do things with feng shui or has it made certain things come to the surface more than maybe what they had before? Well, what's so interesting there is when I first got certified, so I was 50 when I got my, uh, 51 by the time I got my certification. So that was 2018. So it was a little bit before COVID. I was under the impression and I felt that I could only do a good job if I was in your space, like physically. Got it. And then COVID comes, right? <laughs> um, and I was very hesitant to offer online consultations because I just didn't think that I could read a space mm -hmm. the way I read it if I was in there. And then one day I just said, you know what, I'm going to try because somebody asked me and I couldn't get to them. I'm like, I'll give it a try. Let's see how we do. And then I found I was able to do it. I do them on FaceTime versus Zoom because it's easier for a person to walk around with their yeah. phone or their camera and like show me everything. So we do exactly what I would do if I was in person. We start at the front door. They show me the entire entrance because everything starts there. That's the mouth of chi. That's where all your energy comes into your home. And then we do the walkthrough. Same as if I was there in person. And then I found that I could. So I overcame that fear and found that then I could work with people globally. So up until COVID, I hadn't tried, to be honest, because I just didn't think that I could. And then once I tried it and found that it still worked the exact same way, I'm like, wow, well, then I can offer, offer my services globally. And I have. I've done people all over the world, which is such a cool thing. You know, it's like, oh, you're in Monaco. Oh, you're in Ireland. Oh, you're in England. Like, it's just really, really fun to be and to see how people live in different places. We travel a lot, too. So I do get to see. But, you know, traveling and staying in hotels is very different than seeing inside someone's home and how they live in a different part of the world. So that's been a learning experience for me, too. Something that I wouldn't think might work for somebody in Florida. They're like, well, no, but we need this here for X, Y and Z. I'm like, OK, well, then we work with that. So it's a learning experience for everybody. I think that's something so important for people to realize and, and how you've stepped into realizing energy is energy. doesn't matter mm -hmm. where you're at in the world, but it all translates. And when, when everything went crazy and everybody had to go online and do things, I was, it was so fun for me to see so many different businesses starting to find new ways of reaching people and how people were more apt to go, oh, you know what? It does work. I, mm -hmm. I really like this and and giving the ability to reach people all around the world. So I think that's so cool that you were able to do that and take it to that next level. And, and I'm just laughing because I, the team behind me is oh, laughing. Oh yeah, what are they saying? They're like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we kept prodding and prodding and pushing. <laughs> they're right, they did. And I was scared. You know, I'm like, no, I can't do it. I won't be able to do a good job, you know, but yes. The other thing I will say though, on the flip side, and I actually, my current post on Instagram right now is very relevant to this. Um, with everybody on Zoom, I also think it's super, super important to clear you and your space daily mm -hmm. because energy is energy and we are exchanging energy, you know? And when you are all day online and on Zooms, 
And suddenly you might feel really drained and you're like, why am I so tired? I was just on calls all day, but I didn't, you know, I wasn't exerting myself. It's because that energy exchange is still happening. So just a little, another little feng shui tip, like make sure that you're clearing yourself and your space every time I do it in between each call, just to A, come with a neutral state of energy for you, you know, and then B, to clear myself afterwards in case anybody decided to hitchhike along with us, you know, and then when you're doing lives and you're talking to other people and people are coming in on a chat and stuff like that, there's a whole bunch of extra people that you have no idea what their energy is like. So whether it's meetings or lives or Zooms or, you know, just I think clearing is super important in this new modality of us living and working on computers as well, too. Absolutely. That's something I do is I usually try to, when I'm done, I'll walk outside. If mm -hmm. it's warm, it's warmer by you than it is by me. It's so. hot. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's nice out, I'll try to go outside yeah. and just kind of release everything and come back right. in and start over to be that fresh for the next person that's coming right. in. Right. And I think that's something so important. And they're kind of laughing right now. So I'm just hearing the other ones on the other side. They want to kind of go back into, they want to do two things. First, right. like we want, they want to talk about clutter first. Oh. And <laughs> they want to talk about clutter and then they're going to go back into something where they pushed you a little bit. <laughs> This is so funny. I I mean, this is going to be the best interview ever on the planet. <laughs> I love this so much. All right. What do they want to know about clutter? They just want me to talk a little bit more about how clutter affects people. They want you to, you've seen how clutter, releasing clutter around you makes a difference in people. And you talked about the emotional clutter and maybe why people have clutter and maybe ways to clear that a little bit. So... My guess is they want me to talk about all the stuff I inherited from my parents. I mean, I've done hundreds of consultations at this point too, right? But um, my personal story with clutter was when my parents passed away, they passed away when I was 38. My mom dropped out of a heart attack all of a sudden, like standing on the floor gone. My dad died six months to the day after she did because he wow. just was not interested in being here anymore when she was not here. So I inherited a lot of their stuff. And when the consultant we hired came to our house, because that's, you know, how it started, uh, she said, and it was the first time anybody had said that to me, she goes, this doesn't look like you, like this doesn't represent you. And you can see, I mean, this is my office. I'm not a minimalist, you know, but I kept all these things out of obligation that they had come from them, even though, A, I didn't like them, truly didn't like them. And as an interior designer, that's a lot for me to keep stuff that I don't like but I felt such an obligation. And so it was a mental attachment to the things, not a physical, because I didn't like them. Um, and she did what is one of the best things that I do when I work with clients all the time too. She gave me permission to let them go. And mm -hmm. I thought that was so powerful. And it goes back, you know, to the two hands full, like how can anything else come into your life when you are surrounded by things that you don't love and that you're keeping out of guilt and obligation. And it was causing an emotional clutter situation for me, right? Because I was emotionally attached to them, not physically, since I didn't physically like the items in my home, but it was emotional. So it was just such a release. And we were able to find people to gift them to that loved them. Nice. And so we donated some things, we gifted some things. I also got told if anything was broken, my mom was a big one for if something broke, start super gluing it all back together, you know, and then yeah. keeping it because heaven forbid, you might not buy another vase. <laughs> and that led to a mentality of lack, yes. right? That you would not be able to afford to buy a new one if you got rid of that. So a lot of their things also were super glued or repaired or something like that. So being able to let go of all of that was kind of what invited in the book and my spiritual journey and everything else because I released all that clutter. And I, I do. I mean, I work with clients all over. Um, for the most part, clients come to me for they're looking for wealth. They're looking for partners. They're looking for health. Those are the big three. And I'll actually, I have a feng shui card deck that I created too. And I was going to ask you about that because yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. you did the feng shui card deck. Yes. But I, so I'm just going to pull out the Bagua map because this is how practitioners who practice BTB work. 
And so when we talk about clutter and stuff, we're gonna use this. So we use this as our roadmap. We divide your home or space, desk, nightstand, bed, whatever, into the nine energetic areas of your life. So at the very entrance to your home, usually the door will line up with this. This is your career area. Going around will have helpful people in travel. My office happens to be in helpful people in travel. I've had five international trips in the last 14 months, nice. including Egypt, which was my bucket list item since oh, I was 12. Very so cool. <laughs> you can manifest it. Uh, children and creativity. And this can be not only if you're calling in children, but if you're calling in a creative project or you can't finish a project or you can't focus on a project, go look at this area of your house. And my book, came directly from here. My children and creativity oh. area was blocked and I didn't realize it till I got in there and unblocked it and removed things and left empty spaces. And then the creativity was able, right, to come in. Nice. They were able to come in and guide me. Love and relationships. And that could be not just your partner, but relationships in your life in general. Fame and reputation, how you are seen in the world whether in business or not, because not everybody works, right? Some people are right. stay-at-home moms, stay-at-home dads, but how you are seen by others. Up here, we have wealth, and wealth goes beyond the basic necessities. So it's beyond being able to buy your food and clothing and that cup. For me, wealth is international travel <laughs> and doing it well, you know, like just yeah. being able to go to the best places and stay at the nicest places and travel in style and all that stuff. That is what wealth means to me. To somebody else, it's a boat. To right. somebody else, it's a second home. You know, wealth means something different to everybody. So it's not a one size fits all. Family and ancestors. And then here's skills and knowledge. And in the center is health because health affects everything. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes to me and says, I want more wealth. Okay, well, sure. I will go look at the wealth corner of your space and see if there's clutter, if there's broken items, because broken items equals being broke. You know, <laughs> if there's energy leaks, if there's toilets here, you know, I will go see. But if you also want wealth, you also need skills and knowledge. You know, if you don't know anything, how are you going to get wealth? If you don't have helpful people in your life, clients, vendors, whatever the case may be for you, how are you going to get wealth? If you don't right. have a good, if you're not being seen well, how are you going to get wealth? So see, everything relates to everything else. So people want me to just come in and focus. I'm like, no, it's a very layered approach. We have to look at everything because it's all connected. So sure, I'll go look and let's declutter and see what's going on here. But I will look at every area of your house and see how it's relating to everything else. And then that's how we can uncover what's going on. Um Clutter under the bed, big no-no. Oh, interesting. Big no-no. I had a client who wanted to call in a new relationship. She was divorced and she'd had a, a, a gentleman who had moved in with her and then left. And she wanted to call in a partner that she felt would be her next long-term partner. Right. And her house was in good shape. She was a Reiki instructor. So I'm like, I mean, it's in pretty decent shape. I'm not seeing anything, you know, screaming out at me. They're not yelling at me, telling me something's wrong. But I'm like, let's go into your bedroom. She had the two nightstands, the matching lamps. I'm like, okay, so what could it be? And then it was like, oh, what's under your bed? She goes, oh, just old papers. I go, well, what's under your bed? Let's pull them out. And we pulled them out and it was her divorce papers. Uh... It was letters from old lovers. It was gifts and mementos from other old boyfriends along the way. Um, everything with past people who had been partners. And I'm like, well, how can anyone else come in? You're full. The bed is full of people, you yeah. know, because that energy that you're sleeping on. I mean, there's like five guys in this bed with you right now. Like, how can anyone else come in? <laughs> so, you know, clutter can be anything that is holding you back. You know, too many plants can be clutter if you can't take care of them and they're dying and they're, you know, plants are great. And everybody in feng shui will say plants, plants, plants. I love them. I'm a little plant whore. I probably have 70 in our house. And my <laughs> husband's like, can we stop? I'm like, hey, but I take care of them. They're all One doing more. great. <laughs> they're all doing great. You know, it's every day it's checking them and a little yellow leaf here and a little, you know, it's a constant thing. And you, re you realize how much time it takes. Like if we were, when we were in Egypt that we we're gone for two weeks and came back, I'm like, what happened to everything? It's like, no, it's because I wasn't there every single day looking at them. Right. So anything can become clutter that is creating obstacles for you. That pile of shoes by the front door, your collection of teaspoons, whatever it is, if it's out of hand, if it's 
taking over too much of your brain space or your house, then yeah. it's clutter and it needs to be addressed. You know, so. that's very good information. Are they happy me. with that answer? <laughs> they are happy with that answer because it just feels, and I myself have just gone through where I lost a uh, father-in-law, mother-in-law and my mom in the last couple of years. So oh, it's I'm sorry. It's so hard. much coming in, but, yeah. but it's good for people to realize that to be able to go through that and go through it in a way of releasing yourself from the energy it holds. I think that's something so important. And I'm, that's why they wanted to bring that up. They, they're like, they needed that part brought up. The ability to release yourself from what it is emotionally and really make your house your own again. And physically, you know, yeah. I will tell you this. I can't, I can't promise these results. These results are not guaranteed, but <laughs> about 80% of the clients I work with when we get into their closets, because what is closest to you affects you the most. So right. what you put in your mouth, what you put on your body, what you wear on your body, and then your bed, like those are the big mamas, right? And then your house, obviously, because right. you're in it the majority of this time. But when we do a really good cleaning out of closets and really let go, you know, you're probably not going to get back into your high school jeans if you haven't gotten back into them in the last 40 years. Like it might right. be to let them go, you know, and you <laughs> maybe another keep, 40. <laughs> right. Well, and you can't keep everything out of sentimentality because it's just taking up space. So when we do a truly hardcore clutter decluttering session, especially in, in closets or anything that's directly related to you. A lot of my clients lose four to five pounds. Wow. Interesting. Happened even to me. The very first time I did it, that I, I was hardcore, you know, and really got rid of stuff that, oh, but I might. Oh, but what happens if I can't afford to buy it again? And there comes that lack mentality, right? right? Um, my purses, when I had, I have a scar here. I have um, cervical fusion. So I have a plate with six screws. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, all those big, huge handbags that we all wore in the mm -hmm. 90s and the early 2000s, I mean, I can't carry them. My body can't carry that weight anymore. And they were super expensive. They'd been gifts for years for my husband because that's my thing. <laughs> and I had to let them go. And when I let them go, like suddenly all people were gifting me like crazy. I mean, I'm talking Valentino handbags, like a gift, I'm wow. like, you know. <laughs> out of the blue stuff that you wouldn't expect, but it was because I let go something, even though it was beautiful and valuable that wasn't working for me. And you can sell them. I'm not saying you have to just give thousands of dollars away. You can have your piles, get rid of anything that's, you know, all beat up, just toss, find people to donate, find people to get things to and sell, resell. Yeah. I mean, that's great for the environment too. So there's so many different venues for letting go of the stuff that's not working for you anymore that will make you feel good, that there's just no need to not do it, you know? I love that. I love that. And they're very happy with that too, because they're like, we, there are so many people that are holding on to things out of obligation. And, mm -hmm. and like you said, I purchased it for this much. I don't know if I'm going to get it back. Right. Again. And the energy is shifting to bring in much more abundance as we go forward if you're opening yourself up for it. So having that ability, having something simple as going through your home and just decluttering is so huge going forward. And, and then, if it feels too big, start with a drawer. Yeah. And then from a drawer, go to a closet, you know, then from a closet, go to a room. Like you don't have to go on this massive overhaul because people will get so excited and go halfway through the decluttering process and then stop because it became too much. <laughs> So yeah. take it little by little and you will do a much better job in the end. Love that. Love that. And they wanted me to kind of go back a little bit in time for you. So when you started opening yourself up, you did the feng shui, everything started opening up and you started. So they're telling me they're, they're backing me up even further. They're telling me I that even though you saw some people when you were 16, you were actually experiencing things before but it had been in a way of just getting you used to things without being frightening to you. And as you started, you started opening yourself up and you saw your, your uh, boyfriend that had passed mm -hmm. away and you've seen other people since then, but you didn't really share everything with your husband as you went along on this journey. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be juicy. I love this interview. Oh my God. So they're, they're calling me out. They are calling you out. 
<laughs> so they're saying that as you went through this, there was a lot you were experiencing, but not sharing completely. <laughs> and when you finally got to the the tipping point, when you had to, when you, I feel like you got called out on this a little bit. When that happened, how did it go with you and your husband? Because that's a huge change from going from this, you know, this normal woman that he married. Right. To now going, what did I marry? <laughs> right. No, for sure. For sure. I mean, it, and it wasn't just him. It was family members. Um, mm -hmm. Our son, which by the way, our son has my gifts too. And he knows it. And he's almost 30. And he just, and he's had experiences and he just says, I'm not ready yet. And I'm like, and that's fine too. That's back to the free will, right? You can, you can set your timeline or your time frame till you're ready, but he acknowledges he has them and that's good. Yes. Um, one of the best examples of this, of this topic is uh, I went to do my first past life regression. God, those are one of my favorite things in the world to do. If I could do one of those every day, I mean, it'd be just so much fun. Uh, <laughs> So I went and did it. There was this woman in Sarasota and her name is in the book and just, I, I'm not good with names. It's gone off the top of my head right now, but she's phenomenal. And she had me, you know, go into the state and this little life played out. And then I thought I was done. And then she said, no, 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 no. You can't leave yet. There's another one coming in. She said, usually people just go through one, but of course it was right. me. So I was going right. to go through <laughs> So we went through the second one. And the second one I knew was coming. It's like, I could just feel that this had to be told. I needed to hear this yeah. story. I was a sorceress, always light. Thankfully, I've always been a light being. I was a sorceress in medieval England. I could see my hair, like this long flowing cascading hair. I'm like, where, where's that in this lifetime? I, I would take that Rapunzel hair today. Like, please, you know, <laughs> Her extensions cannot create what this woman had at that time. It was gorgeous. <laughs> and it's, that's all I remember was her hair. It was like blonde, blonde hair. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, but I was talking in front of a campfire to like this group of people, um, peasants, obviously. And we we're obviously, I was saying something against the king, the king's soldiers came and they took me and they tied my hands and dragged me away. And so she got rope and tied my hands. And I was like, Whoa. Oh, and so she tied him here and I go, no, they did it this way. And, and she, and so she pulled up my shoulders and tied me and they, and you know, I had to act out this whole thing. Cause I was hung and she goes, this is your wound right here. This is your wound from that lifetime in this lifetime. I go, okay. And that's starting to use my voice. Right. So after this whole process, I was there three or four hours. I drive back to Tampa because Sarasota is about an hour and a half. And my husband's waiting for me. He goes, would you like a glass of champagne? I'm going to get a beer. I'm like, sure. He goes, sit down, tell me all about it. So I sit down and I go through this whole thing with him. And I said, basically, the crux of the matter is I'm supposed to use my voice. I'm supposed to talk. I'm supposed to share my story. I'm supposed to use it to help others. And part of it is writing the book. Because at that point, I was still just kind of jotting things down, not sure what was going to come. I thought maybe they'd go away and leave me alone if I just started writing <laughs> things down. So I tell him all this. And he looks at me so earnestly. And he goes, but you're not going to tell anybody this, are you? They're going to think you're crazy. And I'm <laughs> like, I, I literally just got told to use my voice. And you're telling me not to tell anybody. Like, that's where we were with things. Right? right. And I get that, you know, yeah. I mean, I totally get that because he was worried about me. What were our friends going to say? What were our families going to say? If I'm suddenly walking around saying in another lifetime, I was a witch in another lifetime. I was this, you know, we grew up Catholic. I was never not in a Catholic school from kindergarten to oh, wow. till I graduated from the university of Notre Dame Catholic school. Wow. The whole way. Not a big topic of conversation in the Catholic circles. No, not, not usually, no. You know, and Mexican Catholic to that point, yeah. because I was raised right on the border with Mexico by my parents who adopted me. So these were not things we talked about, you know, so it was a lot for everybody to take on. And I understand how much it was for him to take on too, and kind of have to be, you know, he's kind of have to having to ride this fence of like, is, is she loony? Like, did she flip a switch and, you know, what's happening and. But then things started happening that he was involved in too mm -hmm. that made him much more of a believer. And now he's kind of on board with it. I mean, he's not where I am and I never expect him to be where I am. I still get the, you know, rolled eyes every once in a while, but for the most part, he's right on board. So his dad sends us dimes. Mm -hmm. nice. I love it. 
So I was working with a healer at Miraval, which is one of my favorite places to go when I need healing and to work with, with uh, other healers. And his dad had passed. And this woman who I'd never met before, I sat down uh, in front of her and she, she was going to read me. And she said, your husband has a car that means a lot to him. And my husband had taken his dad's convertible BMW after he passed. And I go, yes, he does. And she goes, whoever's car that is, that's who's sending you guys the dimes. And I'm like, oh my God, how did you know that we're getting dimes? We're finding dimes everywhere. Like I'd open a hotel bed that was made, there'd be dime in it. You know, right. we were finding dimes everywhere. And so he started finding dimes. Our son started finding dimes. And now I look forward to it. Like now if I don't get a dime in like two, three weeks, I'm like, hey, like, <laughs> where are you? And we were just in Aspen last weekend. I'd been shopping. I shopped a little too heavily and I was feeling a little nervous. And I'm walking down the street and there's a dime. I'm like, oh, good. Dad says it's okay to keep shopping. I'm all good. You know, it's like, I mean, there's nothing else in the street. It's not like somebody dumped all their change. Right. One dime right where my foot was stepping. And then right. Father's Day, I walk into an elevator, one dime right in the floor of the elevator. I'm walking down a mountainside. Oh, ask them this. I'm curious. <laughs> walking down a mountainside in Aspen and I find a pile of quarters. Four dollars exactly in quarters. If they've got, if they know who it's from, I'd love to know. <laughs> the one thing I keep hearing from him though is the dimes. He was he was all about. He's so supportive, so supportive of of you, both you, your husband, your whole family. Such a supportive person he is, and it's, I just keep hearing the dimes are. 10 times your wealth, 10 times your wealth. He's always there helping to increase your wealth. He's always, it's like, for him, it's almost like a little game. Love like, it. They can, they can do it. Everything is 10 times. I keep hearing 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. It's like all that. about increasing your wealth 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. And and also, so the four. The, four dollars. Four dollars. Like there, in one day, I found four dollars and 10 cents on the ground. Like, that's it, crazy. Do you have a brother that passed? An uncle? Who? My father in law? Yes. Yeah, his brother passed. Okay. I didn't really know him super well, but yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, because yeah. I keep I keep they keep going the brother, the brother, the brother. Oh. The brother and him were conspiring. <laughs> Having a lot more fun. So it's like we can do this, we could do some more. It was a combination of him and his brother bringing that extra money into you and to show you and that that for that connection bringing that connection into you and they're just saying it can be easy it can be easy to keep they keep showing like just manifesting and she keeps saying 10 times 10 times 10 times dub and doubling doubling the wealth all the time but I feel it was his brother that was there helping it was like it was like two little kids having fun like oh what can we do next I, and it was father's day it was father's day that I found it I mean we're literally on the side of a mountain we're just walking down yeah. a mountainside and and like and the grass is long and I, I just look down and I'm like what is that and it's just a pile of quarters <laughs> everyone with me was like what the hell did you just find I'm like I don't even know how much is in here it's just a pile of quarters <laughs> nothing else again somebody didn't dump out their change it was only right. quarters it so was it's very specific and exactly four dollars too yes. specifically placed and it's just they're just I just see both of them just laughing like little kids see, like I freaking well, love that I mean that just makes my day <laughs> tell them to keep doing it I have so much fun with that they are having a blast with it. <laughs> but as they did that, and and you've had others come into you, mm -hmm. at what point did you let your husband know that you had been talking and communicating with those on the other side? Was that something that just little bits at a time? Were you like feeding them like little tidbits all the way through? <laughs> my husband and my son for many, many years, ever since my son was little, knew about my boyfriend. But the reason that I would share that story was not because I'd seen him because he passed. It was a drunk driving situation, unfortunately. Right. He was not the driver, but right. everybody in the car died. And I didn't because my parents didn't let me get in the car. They punished me that night for absolutely no reason. But obviously we know the reason now, right? Right. But, so I've shared that story with my husband and my son with, with the scaring for the drunk driving, you know? And so that story they've known for a long time, but then the other people that started coming, 
again, first and foremost, I didn't realize that everybody couldn't do it. So part of that was part of the sin, you know, the thing. But the next time that I really shared one was right when my mom died. So my mom died, uh, like I said earlier, you know, she just dropped dead. It was very traumatic for all of us. My dad was still alive. And she sat at the end of my bed for five days and she wasn't saying a word to me. She was just sitting there looking at me and I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't say it. Finally, the fifth morning I woke up and I told my husband, I think I might need to go see like a shrink, like something's wrong. Like, I mean, she's just sitting there looking at me. I think I might be kind of losing it since mm -hmm. I never got to say goodbye. And again, I was 38. This is way before I kind of put the dots together right. and in grief, obviously grief stricken, traumatized, you know, shock, denial, the whole thing, mad, everything. Right. Um, and that day I talked to my dad and I'd been very hesitant to tell him too, cause I didn't want to upset him. Right. And I finally just was at a breaking point that day. And I talked to my husband and then I talked to my dad and I just said, I'm so sorry to say this to you. I feel so bad, but I think I'm losing my marbles. Like mom keeps showing up and he starts crying and he says, I have been waiting to know that she's okay. And you just told me she's okay. And that was the last time she came, you nice. know? So then when he passed away six months later, he sat at my bed one night and I'm like, got it. You're good. I'll tell my sister. And I told her and she didn't, you know, she doesn't believe in any of this and, and that's okay. But my job was to say it. And he came only one night because I understood now. And then, and I do remember when my boyfriend passed away, I remember going with my mom. I told my mom, I need to go talk to his mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm 16 years old and the poor woman lost both her sons in that one. Wow. So I just said, I need to go talk to her. Mm -hmm. And so we waited a few weeks and then we went and she was very gracious and let me in. And she showed me his room and where my picture was by his nightstand and all that. And I told her what happened and she, she cried and she said, you know, I, I needed to hear that. So I didn't realize what I was doing at that point, but obviously, you know, then my Oracle skills and my medium skills were coming through and I was just, I wasn't interpreting. I was just giving the message that I was being given. Right. right. You know? Um, so then there was a few more, there was some scary ones, one scary one in Mexico. Um, but in the end I was actually helping somebody cross over. I just didn't know it. We were at a hotel that was in a Mayan burial ground, but Oh, we didn't know on day of the dead for children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a great time to take a trip. <laughs> I'm going to have to do my research a little better and see where hotels are built from now on, because I mean, you know, <laughs> well, it's a great way to meet people, you know, people that aren't really here. I but... <laughs> met her. I met her. <laughs> yeah. And I do share that story in the book because it's, it's just, I mean, but yeah. So then little by little, I just started sharing a little bit more with him as my journey unfolded, you know, and some things were easier to accept than others, rightfully so. Some things were a little too far out there. You know, when I started speaking in light language, he's like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, I, I don't even know. I don't know what this is. I don't know why I talk like this, you know, but when I do breath work, I go right into light language and I channel the Hathors. Nice. And, you know? I mean, so, and then spirit had fun with me in Lionsgate last year. Cause I've never, nobody's ever seen me do light language except when I'm in breath work. And if I'm in a session or I'm in a group, you know, no one's looking at you. You're all individual laying down. Right. But I was, I did a Lionsgate meditation last year, 2023. And they told me, hang out, you know, finish the meditation, get on Instagram and channel light language. I'm like, no. <laughs> Are you kidding? People are going to think I'm bananas. I give feng shui tips. I'm not going to do light language. And they said, do it. And I did it. And I posted it. And I'm like, I, I, oh, oh, you know, that fear again, right? What are people going to think? They're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to stop following me. And I got so much support and so much great feedback. And I said during that one, if they ask me to do it again, I will. They haven't so far. But if they ask me to do it again, I will share it. So it was a transmission for Lionsgate that came through me from the Hathors. It is what it is. And I keep hearing from them. It was also a way for you to get the correct clients for you because mm. you had a mix of clients that were there. And this kind of helped solidify who you wanted your clients to really be. And it solidified the clients that were the best for you moving forward. Oh, cool. 
So they're, they're just saying this was something to help you get the clients that really resonated with you and to draw in those that were, they're just saying, <laughs> I'm just hearing the laughter. The feng shui is some is a way for you to reach a lot of people that normally wouldn't have been reached, but because of who you are and the presence you portray, it creates the ability to reach people that normally never would have approached any of this beyond the feng shui. Oh, that's cool. I love that. And so they are, they're so happy with that part of it. And there was something, I was going through some of your stuff and it says, and I'm just going to go back to the one thing because there was a quote you did on clutter and we're kind of going back and forth, but they want me to bring this they back. They want clutter. Anyway. Sure. We're <laughs> helping somebody. Somebody's listening to this that needs to hear it. So that's great. Absolutely. There was a quote you did on clutter that clutter can be more than physical items. There can be clutter in your mind as well. And that clutter, they, they're just saying that clutter is not only for feng shui, but also clearing yourself spiritually and that's something that you're very good at is clearing yourself spiritually to open yourself up to what else is out there and to find what resonates with you instead of they're just showing me a lot of people are grabbing a lot of different aspects of the spiritual awakening per se but mm -hmm. then wanting to keep all of them because they learned it, they paid money to learn it. They're, they're saying some of them had paid money to learn it. So they want to keep all that with them. Mm -hmm. And they're just saying that this is a time to realize even the spiritual clutter can be there of letting go of what doesn't work with you and take only what you need. And that's something that you yourself, they're, they're just saying, have been so good at taking what you need, letting the rest go, taking what works for you, releasing the rest. And as you've continued to do that over time, have you found things are clearer when you let go of the spiritual aspects that don't serve you anymore or really didn't resonate completely? Oh, I'd say 100%. Yes. And I'm able to, what's the word I'm looking for? Like suss out when a healer isn't maybe in the the best of intentions. You know what I mean? Like not yes. everybody is, is of the light. And, and I experienced a couple of those in Sedona um, where, you know, you just think because they're a healer in Sedona that it's going to be light and love and not everybody is that. And sometimes you have to go through a couple of trial and errors to start understanding and you'll feel it. I think all of us have the ability to feel yeah. it, you know, that gut that feeling, that tightness, if you're working with someone, and this is for everybody, you know, for any time you're walking into any session, if you start getting that tightness or your gut starts to hurt or your stomach starts to churn, it's probably spirit saying, this might not be the person for you, you know, or this is not working. So yes, I, I, I'm able to suss those people out and just very kindly say, no, thank you. You know, cause I do get asked to do workshops. I get asked to collaborate on things and I'm just too busy sometimes. <laughs> right. You know, you don't yeah, have to be absolutely. nasty about it, but you can put it off enough times that the point does get across that maybe that, that energy is not completely aligned and clients too. I mean, for me, it's clients too, not just because you come to me, am I going to take you sometimes it's just not a good fit. And that's exactly what they wanted to, to get to the heart of the matter is mm -hmm. to realize everybody resonates differently and to really pick and choose and be very carefully aware mm -hmm. of who you're working with because they're all different. Everyone's different and everyone resonates with different people and there's nothing right or wrong with that, but you have right. to know what's right for you. Right. And that's the biggest, that's the clutter they wanted to talk about. Good. <laughs> so, thank you for that. I think sure. I'm like, go back here. Like, <laughs> that is exactly why. <laughs> and as you started this journey, you started writing the book and then you kind of wanted to, you know, you said you kind of like, oh, maybe they'll leave me go alone. away. <laughs> <laughs> if I just ignore them a little longer, just do what they asked me for a while and just keep stringing them along. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> Not so well. There's a best selling book sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were the points that really kind of pushed you to finally like, okay, I'm going to actually go through this. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to publish it. What were 
the things that happened in there to kind of push you over the edge? I think as the stories unfolded and as I had the experiences that I had and as I was able to connect the dots, I saw where my story could be of service to others. Because, you know, actually part of what when I when he first said, you know, you're going to do this, I'm like, truly, who cares what a white privileged middle aged woman has to say that was my response because I'm like I didn't have I mean yes I was adopted as a child but I went to a good family had a great life with them you know not understanding at that point that you still have that inner child work to do when you are an adopted child of rejection and abandonment and all that and I part of all that is part of the book you know because I did have to deal with that so once all those things started unfolding I started to see that my story probably could help some other people, you know, whether it was the adoption side of it, or it was the spiritual unfolding side of it, or it was the feng shui part of it. Um, there was something that maybe could be of help. And then that's when I felt better about moving forward with it. Cause I was just kind of like, I mean, you know, you hear these stories on the news and these people have overcome these incredible odds. And I'm like, my story just doesn't feel like that. So I feel like, A, it's a waste of time and money and effort. And, you know, who cares? Um, people are going to go, oh, yeah, she's got something to say. So as it started happening and as I started writing and as I stuck to it, then it did start to feel like, all right, okay, I've got something. You know, it might still go nowhere. I might self-publish and might do nothing, you know, but instead it has. It's won three awards and became a bestseller. And I'm like, Okay, so I think that's them validating for me that I, you know, I did what they asked me. What I do, what I will say is I now try not to fight so much when they ask me to do something because it was hard and it was a journey and I, and I had to relive a lot of uncomfortable things, right? I had to relive my mom and dad's death. I had to relive um, a lot of the adoption trauma that I didn't even realize was there. So this book wasn't fun to write or to live through, or to get to the end result, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, it was a great experience. No, it wasn't. Um, but then fast forward, and I end up with shingles right after getting COVID. And this entire side of my face is a blister. You can't see my eye, my eyes closed, my ear, all the way down my neck and all through my scalp. I was hideous, like couldn't leave the house hideous wow. and in a lot of pain. And yeah, she was extremely painful. <laughs> and at that point, they said, okay, now you're going to write a card deck. And I'm like, <laughs> like I, so they used my downtime during shingles, just like they used my downtime during COVID to write the book and then to edit it. They used, like, they shut me down. They physically just said, you can't walk out the door because you look like a scary monster. Um <laughs> I did. I mean, I was walking up the stairs one day and my husband actually went like this. And I go, what? He goes, I just, I forgot that you had the shingles. I'm like, oh my God, is it that bad? Because it kind of is. Like, it was bad. I have photos. And I mean, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Um, we thought maybe I was going to need a plastic surgeon because like to put me back together, we didn't know if my face was going to come back together or not, oh. but thankfully it did. But either way, in three weeks, I channeled the entire card deck because wow. I didn't fight them. I was like, all right fine, you got me. I can't go anywhere. But what do you want me to say? Again, that doubting, like, well, who am I to write a card deck? There's some amazing feng shui books out there. Why do we need another one? And they're like, well, no, you're not going to write a book. You're going to write a card deck. It's an Oracle deck. It's a very different thing. There isn't one out there. And then I started doing research and there is one out there. Mine's the only one. I'm like, all right, so what are we going to call this one? And they're like, what should we feng shui today? I'm like, Okay, it doesn't have the word shit in it. That's good. We'll keep going. <laughs> and it, they just channeled through me. And in three weeks, that thing was done because nice. I didn't fight it, which was incredible. So now I just got told the other day that there are still three books in my future. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Um, and I don't know. You know, I'm like, all right, if you guys are saying there's three books, there's three books. Just, you know, let's not fight over them. Just tell me what you want me to write and how you want me to write it and and we'll do it so that's been the biggest change for me is I don't argue anymore I just say fine but help me do it 
Right. You know, <laughs> you could, you should also tell them that you may, maybe you want to do one in Aruba. Maybe you want to do one in yeah. Monaco. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the last one I did in Sedona and Santa Fe, which was lovely. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, find me another second home somewhere. Make me go there. I, I keep getting Portugal. They keep, I, I keep getting told by people, we're going to Portugal. You should go to Portugal. We're going to this. So I think Portugal's on my list coming up. So I must need to do something there. Um, but yes, they can find me another really fabulous location and I'll, I'll sit down and ride away. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it worth it when they do it in a fun way. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You know. I, I know we're getting closer to the end of our time here. I think we're already at it, but, uh, I just wanted to ask you, is there something else you'd like to talk about before we close the session? And uh, they want me to go back for one thing first. Go for it. Okay, we're going to go back because they're asking me. It's fine. <laughs> so there was something, and I think it was just on a blog or a post you just did recently, or maybe I found it on. Anyhow, but they brought it to me. It said you had things to look for in your home if you're feeling low on energy. Oh yeah, actually, here I'll just pull it up so I can see it because you know, because I think it's you been just, a minute. You did that one, and it was uh, how to realize things in your home can be drawing that energy from you. Wow, they are really into the feng shui and the decluttering today, aren't they? they? That is funny. So whoever your audience is is needing to hear this. Yes. <laughs> so yes. So I'll read this post, and then we can chat about it a bit. So things to look for if you are feeling low on energy. First and foremost, we can all have low energy days, right? I mean, yes. every day is not, hey, yay. Yeah. But if you're consistently feeling low and there's no physical reason why you should be, you know, you're not ill, there's not, you know, something going on. Um, if you notice it in your kids or your spouse or your animals, like if you just feel a very low energy vibe, things to look for. Furniture bought at antiques or thrift stores. And the reason for this is predecessor chi. There's nothing wrong with the fact that you bought furniture at an antique or a thrift store, but what you're bringing into your house is everybody else's energy that owned the furniture before you. Nice. So you could be bringing in a two, 300 year old piece of furniture, right? And whoever's owned it and whatever their crap was has just come into your home. So a lot of, and antiques also, you know, you think of something that's antique, it, the, what, what's the first word that comes to your mind? Old. Old. Right? That's the first thing that old. comes to your mind. So old energy, feeling old, feeling down because older people tend to, you know, shrink into themselves and old. so doesn't mean you can't have them, but you have to space clear them before you bring them into your house, mm -hmm. you know? So take Palo Santo, take a smudge stick, take whatever kind of space clearing tool you like. You can take a drum, you can take a bell, a rattle, anything that you can that's going to break up that energy and release it before it comes into your space so it doesn't like affect the energy in your space. Okay, okay. what else did I have on there? Broken items, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Too many items on the ground, toys, baskets, shoes, anything at eye level or below. Like where we live, we don't have basements because it would oh. flood. But right. you do. But anything for us at eye level or below eye level would count as subconscious. So that mm -hmm. means that your subconscious is weighing heavily on you. And if your eye is constantly drawn towards the floor and you have to watch where you're stepping because there's so much crap all over the floor, yeah. then you know, you're looking down. You're always looking down, which then brings your energy down. Um, too much oversized dark furniture. That seems pretty self-explanatory. You know, you want things yeah. to scale in your home. Lack of light or fresh air. You know, I don't care if it's cold or hot. We open at least our front door for a few, even if it's 30 seconds every single day. I don't care if it's raining or it's 100 degrees or there's mosquitoes. It's just letting in that air. Open your windows during the day. Like even if it's just the blinds, open the curtains. I had one client that said, no, I like everything closed. And yes. she was mid forties, never been married, cat lady and not happy. And I'm like, well, you, you're not even giving your child, like you've closed in your world and she worked from home. So she oh. never left. She never went outside. I'm like, at least open the blinds. No. And I mean, I ended up stopping working with her because I'm like, there's only so much I can do. So I brought in different levels of artificial light and bright colors just to kind of lift the environment. But 
you know, you have to meet me halfway too, and you have to right. want to change the energy in your space too. Unfinished projects, back to mental clutter, yeah. right? Because that's weighing on you back here somewhere. It's always going around. Yeah. Uh, drab paint, another one, just dull drab. Clutter at eye level, we talked about that. Blocks opportunities in your everyday life. Sad, chaotic artwork. I pay very close attention to the mm. artwork in my in my in my clients' homes and in mine. You know, I was walking up our staircase one day in our other house, and I hadn't. You know, you put up those walls of staircases. You know that you have the family wall and you have pictures and you have artwork mixed in, and it looks really pretty. And then one day, I just stopped to like look at what was in those frames and look and see what was in the pictures. And then I started going, okay, well, it just in this one picture, divorce, divorce, dead overdosed, um, ended up being a cheater, you know, and I'm like, whoa, like that's the energy that's in the center of my home. Cause the staircase was in the center of our oh. home. So look at your artwork, look at the pictures that are around your home, you know, the sad clown, the, the chaotic, you know, super, super, super contemporary, but just a whole bunch of circles or splatters. If that gives you these feelings, that, you know, <laughs> then you got to get rid of it, you know? Um, for people who want a partner, if you have a lot of single subject artwork, mm. you're you're yes. calling in just being single. So bring in artwork of things in pairs. It doesn't have to be people in pairs, but things in pairs. Uh, dead plants and flowers, pretty self-explanatory, dead energy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's, that is a good one. I'm glad that they wanted us to bring it back. Somebody is needing very much to hear this. So we are reaching people that are needing to hear this because they are very insistent on this topic which is unusual so absolutely that's why I'm like why are we keep going back to this <laughs> but they, it's for someone so I'm glad but the spirituality the feng shui and the spirituality really go hand in hand and especially like you said with people and this is the one thing they're like the the big tidbit in there was when people are looking to find another partner to have things in pairs versus single is something important and and happy things in their house instead of things that are sometimes angry or sad or you know the the pictures of people like you said that eh, they may might not have been the greatest people all the time or maybe they're not here anymore why do you have them there there's, very... there's places for ancestors like there's a great area your family and ancestor area which would be if you're at your front door and i'm looking in it's going to be the center left of your home great place to honor your ancestors and have pictures of deceased loved ones and things of that nature. But yeah, I mean, a whole bunch of divorces and deaths and OD, like you don't need that, that energy. And I'll share a super quick story with you. We were looking for our home in Sedona and we, it was a split level home. So already the energy is going like this. Right? right. And then we go downstairs and there's, and they're telling me to tell this story. So, okay. Um, <laughs> I walk into this room and I hope to God that these people have changed it. My heart just breaks for these children there was three twin beds. It was obviously like a basement because it was built on the side of a mountain. So it was like the room on the bottom, right? Um, the, right. the door is at the mid level. And so there's only like tall casement windows. So very little light coming in. Above each twin bed was a hanging clown. Like Ooh. with the creepy calm face and okay. hung by a wire to the ceiling, looking down at the bed. And I just walked in there and I turned around, I walked back upstairs. I go, no, 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 no. And I told the real estate agent, I'm like, please, 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 for the sake of these children, tell these people to take that down. Like, how do these children even sleep? Yeah. And then at their front door were two spitting cobras, you know, like the Talavera pottery, oh, yeah. that Mexican pottery that's super brightly painted on yeah. each side as you're walking up to the front door in cobra mode, spitting cobras at you. I'm like, well, that's very well I'm like get me the hell out of this house like, I don't know who lives here but it's crazy people I'm out and it was a beautiful home and I just refused I'm like no just no <laughs> you know <laughs> good so, choice <laughs> little, but little things like that you know you have to pay attention to what you put in your house yeah like I mean that how how does anybody I mean these poor kids <laughs> just keep going back to these poor children <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be the children in that no. room. I mean, you go you go to sleep to a hanging clown and you get home from school to spitting cobras. I mean, <laughs> and if the people of this house are listening to this podcast, you know what to go do. Get rid of all of it. The, <laughs> Please remove the clowns and the cobras. <laughs> 
So just, you, and you know, you become blind to it after a while. So just yeah. like walk into your house and walk around like you're visiting for the first time and really pay attention to what's on your walls. You know, what's on your shelves? Like, what are you surrounding yourself with? Because that's going to affect you all day, every day and your kids yeah. and your pets and everybody in the house. Absolutely. And that's something people don't realize is mm -mm. to take a moment and walk in your house with fresh eyes. Because when you do that, a lot of people want to get closer spiritually and, and opening a space to, to be open to receiving information. So before you do that, maybe take a look around your house to say, what am I doing that might be blocking that information from coming into me? And, and that's the biggest thing I hear from them is, getting into the spirituality for so many people is so important and it's opening people's eyes, but they're forgetting to look around what's around them to help them on their journey of spirituality, to help them be looking forward to all those synchronicities that come in, like, like everything you've been experienced, all the synchronicities with that. And, and the, you know, you can't make this shit up. You really can't. I need to start okay. going down the, the hanging clowns. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> oh, it's beyond, beyond. I think I had a nightmare that night. I just was, I've been so traumatized by that. That was in 2018 and I'm still thinking about it. I mean, just. <laughs> I I feel sorry for the kids. Right, that's all. I mean, my heart just breaks for them. I'm like, I want to. I wanted to just take them down myself, but yeah. Then you yeah. have to respect other people's spaces too, right? You can't do that either. <laughs> no, no, you have to respect that. But I just I just want to thank you so much and and I encourage people if you're looking at having for having Alejandra to come in or to FaceTime, go through your house, find what those blockages might be around you. You offer that service to people. Mm -hmm. and I think it's so important for people to look at that. If you're really looking at decluttering, start with looking at it in a different way. And Alejandra, you are amazing, I feel. And, and they're just saying you've helped so many people already. The amount of people you've helped, not only help them with their homes, but in their own spirituality because you helped open up their homes they're just so thankful and knowing they just want you to know what an impact you're having, even for people who only want the home stuff, mm -hmm. what you're helping with on such a spiritual aspect of opening them up to everything else that's around them. I just hear like clapping from the other side for you for they're like, you, you have to realize what you're accomplishing in such a different way and reaching people that would never have been reached in a different way. Ah, this is, this was like the best interview ever. I mean, like I never thought I'd get to chat with it. Like, this is amazing. I could stay here all day with you. This is so much fun. <laughs> it has been so much fun and I would chat all day too, but I know we've got time. No, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but I appreciate everything you're doing. And I really want to encourage everyone check out to check out your book. The, I can't, I I just can't make this stuff, this shit up. It's, it's such a fun, it's fun. It's, it's a fun a fun way just with the title, a fun way for people to really kind of dive in deep on a lot of things in their life, opening things up without taking themselves quite so seriously. And I think that's something yep. that's important going forward because there is a lot of hard and heavy and challenging things people go through in life. And to start off on a little bit on a lighter note is so important. And I'm so glad you did that. And, and listen to their nudging sometimes pushing it they're like they're like showing pushing you into the water <laughs> it was so gentle fun. you guys gentle please <laughs> they weren't so gentle with you i know <laughs> but i just want to thank you again and i want to encourage people make sure to check out alejandra's information go on amazon and the, on her website and if you're looking at getting uh, your own feng shui done in your house to open things up, make sure to check her out. And it's Alejandra uh, Brady. I don't think the G is in your no, website. My website Alejandra, is just Alejandra Brady. Alejandra Brady. Mm -hmm. And those that information, the links will also be down below and also on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So definitely make sure to check out everything with Alejandra because she is amazing. I've got to say, I am so impressed with you and impressed with everything you offer. And they're also bringing me up for people 
that are looking for just tidbits of things to go on your website because you have like a different, I don't know if it's blogs or what, I can't remember what it was under, but with the different tidbits of of different subjects to go on there because you have so much great information for oh, people. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm on Instagram a lot too. I'm very, very active on Instagram, but my Instagram feeds into my website. So that's probably what they're all kind of talking nice. about. So you yes. can kind of see it all together. It, it's a it's you have so much great information on there so I encourage everyone to go out and check that out for sure and if you have anything else to say Alejandra before we close no I'm I'm just so grateful to you I'm so grateful to all our teams that showed up and played with us today because <laughs> truly the best I've interview I've ever done in my life I feel like I had a whole session with you and I'm, yeah. um so just just grateful to everybody and I hope that we have helped whoever definitely needed to be helped with the clutter information. I feel that was so specific because yeah. there's so many avenues in feng shui. So it was obviously very definitively for your audience. So I hope that those people hear it and, and work with it. Awesome. And thank you so much. This has been so enjoyable for me. So much fun. My team is just, they're just having so much fun today with everything. It's been so much fun and I appreciate it. And I appreciate you greatly. I appreciate for everything you've shared because there are so many different aspects that is going to be helping a lot of people with this interview. So thank you so much for that. You are so welcome. And I just want to thank you again, Alejandra, so much for your time, sharing your knowledge. And I want to remind everyone to make sure if you've missed any past episodes, you can always go on and listen to the podcast and also go on my YouTube channel, Angela Zabel, uh, Teacher Coach Medium, and you can listen and watch the interviews. I feel it's so much better to watch them a lot of times. And also the next ones are always coming up on the first and third Tuesdays of the month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure to catch the next ones coming up. And also, I want to thank all of you for listening and expanding and amplifying our universe together. Thank you all and have an absolutely amazing day.